Well, today what we're going to talk about is the relationship between a concept known as utility and the indifference curves that we've been discussing um, over the last week or so. Utility is the economist's word for happiness. It's kind of a strange word when you think about it. You've got this person who's really happy and, and we're trying to identify a way of measuring degrees of happiness. So economists came up with this notion of utility or happiness. And so we've got a really happy person here and we can identify them as having lots of utility. The problem is how do we compare utility from this guy to this guy over here who, well, he doesn't seem to be quite as happy. So is this guy a lot happier than this guy? Well, it looks like it based on their expression, but putting a numerical value on happiness is not an easy uh, thing to undertake. So one of the things when we look at utility is that we say that utility is not comparable across people. This guy might be entirely happy. In fact, he might have a higher level of utility than this guy who's just going through life, sitting back and enjoying the, uh, you know, stopping and smelling the roses. He might have a, a larger amount of stuff. But we don't look at utility in that way. Instead, what we do is we use utility to help us understand about how this guy and how this guy make choices to hopefully improve the amount of utility that they have. So, how do we go about doing it? Well, total utility in and of itself isn't all that helpful when it comes to making choices. Instead, what we look at is a concept known as marginal utility, or the change in utility that happens as you consume one more of a particular good. Let's say that super happy man over here decides he's going to stop at Dunkin' Donuts, and he wants to buy one donut. Well, that one donut's going to give him a certain amount of happiness, and it's going to add to his total level of happiness. Now, let's say that first donut gave him a lot of enjoyment, so he buys a second donut. That second donut adds to his total utility, but the marginal utility is the change that happens. Let's say, for example, and these are totally fictitious numbers, let's say that his total utility with one donut equals 100. And when we add a donut, his total utility goes up to 120. What does that mean? I don't know. Because this guy might buy a donut, it might give him 30 units of utility. But how he measures happiness and how this guy measures happiness might be entirely different. What we want to look at is whether or not the total utility has increased or decreased, and that's what happens at the margin. The margin is the difference between these two, which in this case is 20. The marginal utility, or the change in utility, is really what we want to pay attention to. And that's what's going to help us to understand how people make choices and hopefully how they make the optimal choices. Another way of looking at marginal utility is to look at it from a mathematical perspective. Marginal utility, which we'll abbreviate MU, Marginal utility equals the change in utility that occurs multiplied marginal utility, we'll abbreviate that with MU, is equal to the change in total utility. Another way of looking at that is to say that marginal utility, the change in total utility, is equal to marginal utility times the change in how much of one of these goods that you are consuming. We'll say goodbye to the happy man. If this is one, if we're looking at a change in one unit, then utility simply becomes equal to, or a change in utility is equal to marginal utility times 1. All right, now let's put that into some context here with what we were talking about prior to this when we deal with indifference curves. A utility function is a mathematical representation of total utility. A utility function 
looks like this. A very simple one anyway. It says that utility is equal to or is part of a function, a, a, a uh, contribution from the goods that you consume. Utility is equal to small u of x1 and x2. So this simply means, this mathematical uh, representation here simply means that utility is a function, this small u, putting these two terms in parentheses gives us an indication that we're looking at a function. So your happiness comes from, as a result of consuming x1 and x2. That's our utility function. Now, the utility function is going to help us to understand or help us to relate back to indifference curves because this utility function is going to give us an indication of the marginal rate of substitution. And if you remember, that's what we call the slope of the indifference curve. It's the rate at which you would uh, substitute a little bit of x2 for x1. The marginal rate of substitution. So if you had one more unit of x2, how much x1 would you give up? Or if you had one fewer unit of x2, how much x1 would you need to be paid to keep you on the same indifference curves? Remember, when we're talking about the marginal rate of substitution and we're talking about indifference curves, we're talking about the trade-offs that exist between those two goods to keep you equally happy, to keep you indifferent. Uh, now we're starting to make the connection where utility, your happiness, is reflected by the indifference curve. And so the marginal rate of substitution tells us what's the trade-off if we go from point A to point B, and if that means that we're increasing x1, the change in x1, if that's a one unit change, how much x2 am I going to have to give up? That's the marginal rate of substitution. So let's com combine all this stuff mathematically to see where the utility and the marginal rate of substitution come into play. So. We'll start off with our initial equation. Let's say we're dealing with these two goods. And we have the marginal utility times the change in consumption of x1. And we're going to add that to the marginal utility of good 2 times the change in consumption of good 2. That equals our change in total utility. We're just dealing with two goods. And we're looking at how the consumption change between these two goods, x1 and x2, yields us or leads us to a change in total utility. Now, if we're on the indifference curve, that change in utility should equal, think about it, it should equal zero. It should be zero change in total utility, even though we're consuming different amounts of x1 and x2, because we're staying on the indifference curve. So, now, if this is zero, we can start to work with this mathematically. So, what we're going to do is this. We're going to set up marginal utility times the change in x1, and we're going to set that equal to, by taking this to the other side of the equal sign, it's going to equal negative marginal utility 2 times the change in x2. Again, we're keeping utility constant. And now if we just rearrange this mathematically, what are we going to end up with? Well, we're going to end up with this. We're going to take x1 over here, for the change in x1, divide through by the change in x1 on both sides. These cancel out. And then what we're going to do is we're going to divide through each side by minus marginal utility 2. So these guys cancel out, and well, what we're left with is this. Marginal utility 1 over mar uh, minus marginal utility 2 is equal to the change in x2 over the change in x1. So what does that mean? 
Well, remember the slope of our indifference curve. It's the change in x2 over the change in x1. This right here is our marginal rate of substitution. And that marginal rate of substitution is equal to the change in our marginal utility. The marginal utility of 1 divided by the marginal utility of 2. So what we're looking at here in summation is how does the concept of utility, specifically marginal utility, relate to our indifference curves? Well, that slope of the indifference curve, the marginal rate of substitution, tells us the trade-off of the two goods, but it also tells us the change of marginal utility of these two goods relative to each other. 